The NBA is changing year by year. Players, rules, coaches, play styles, game plans, it all changes. Some for the better, some not. Over the past decade, scoring has been up immensely and this year is no exception as during the first 130 games of the season, the scoring average is up to 112.4 points per game versus last year's 106.3 points per game. So why is this, you ask? The NBA started in 1946, as we all know. The scoring average started off at 67.8 points per game but quickly rose to 80 by 1948. It slowly increased until the 1961-1962 season, where it climaxed at 118.8 points per game. From there, it slowly decreased at an inconsistent pace until the 1974-1975 season at 102.6 points per game. As expected, it rose to 110.1 points per game by the 1983-1984 season. It hovered around that range throughout most of the 80s and then dropped to under 100 points in the 1995-1996 NBA season. In the hopes of relieving high volume scoring from the 60s, the NBA decided on decreasing the radius of the three-point line from 23 feet 9 inches to 22 feet. Although this did increase the three-point field goals taken from 9.9 .9 to 15.3, it actually decreased the scoring league-wide by 0.1 points per game. It was reverted back to its original radius in 1997. Scoring generally stayed within the 90s until 2013 where it boosted up to 101 points per game. And now, as we know it, the league average is sitting at 112.4 points per game, the most since 1971. So why is scoring up this year? Why has it been rapidly increasing for the past 8 seasons? The answer is simple, defense. Defense has not gotten worse, at least not by a lot, and offense hasn't gotten any better besides the increased usage of the 3 point line, in which the efficiency hasn't even gone up since 1994. It's simply the way defense is being played. It all starts with the hand checking rule. Before the restriction was introduced, it restricted dribble and drive penetrators from getting to the rim because defenders could feel which way the ball handler was going to drive. Because of this, speed among guards and wings was not nearly as important as it is today. The defense was allowed to get closer to the opposition because of this, therefore decreasing the space allowed to get a jump shot off. As you can imagine, bigs prospered with this. When people explain that there is no room for post-up bigs anymore, it all comes down to the hand check rule. Before the restriction was implemented in the 1994-1995 season, there was only 9.93 shot per game. The next year, there was 15.3. Although the shortening of the 3 point line also implemented in the season, the impact wouldn't have been nearly as big. To further prove this hypothesis, pre-hand check rule 30 out of the 39 MVP awards went to post out players, which is 77%. Post hand check rule, only 9 out of the 25 MVPs went to post out players. And even more so when the rule was enforced in 2005, there have only been one MVP going to a prominent post player, that being Dirk Nowitzki. And if you want to look at it this way, the two MVPs before the rule was enforced were Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett, and the two after were guards, both of which were Steve Nash. However, the MVP is a sketchy award, it doesn't always go to the best or most valuable player, so staying on the topic of scoring, let's look at all the big scoring games from bigs and guards alike. For the purpose of this, it will be post 2004 as even though the rule was implemented in 1994, it was not called often and it was made clear to the officials when to call it before the 2004-2005 season began. Also most small forwards will be counted as guards as most are dribble drive penetrators. Before the hand check rules enforced in 2005, there were 221 50 point games from post up players and only 153 from guards and wings. 69.23% of the 50 point games belong to prominent post up players, meaning only 30% belong to perimeter players. If you look at today's statistics, there have been 104 times guards put up 50 in a game, while only 13 came from post players. That was only 12.5%, so big scoring games have definitely shifted from the post to the perimeter with the aid of the hand check rule, 3 point line, and widening of the lane. So as you can imagine, it definitely limits the prowess of perimeter defenders, as there hasn't been a single guard to win the Defensive Player of the Year award since the 1995-1996 season. Before 2005, there have been 6 guards to win the award and there have been none after. So why was this rule put in place and then enforced anyways? It's simple. The league is a business, we all know that, and what makes up most of the fan base? Casual fans, children, ignorant bandwagoners. And what do these casual fans want to see? They want to see something they can relate to. Not everyone is 7 feet tall and 300 pounds, not everyone can do a windmill dunk, but what someone can do is a crossover, or shoot a 3. A jump shot is simply more appetizing to the eye for an uninformed casual fan than a drop step per se. A very small percentage of the NBA's fan base knows a ton about the NBA and basketball as a whole. 
They go to games for the experience, they watch highlights on TV for the excitement, the 5% of fans who aren't ignorant and know more than a thing or two about the NBA and its history aren't going to outweigh the 95% no matter how many seasons tickets or jerseys they buy. The NBA is feeding the majority, which is understandable, but where will 90% of the casual fans be in 5 years? Probably not watching an NBA game, that's for sure, whereas the loyal fans will most likely stay loyal. The NBA implemented the rule to provide a more free-flowing playstyle, and it, it worked out, but now it's getting to the point where this is a foul? Anything can be okay, but only in moderation. The NBA succeeded in making wings and guards a bigger scoring force, but now it's tumbled over. Post-scoring has never been a lost art, it's just that there are now more efficient ways of scoring, in driving and shooting, with a hand check rule imposed. Since no defender can even touch the ball handler anymore, and this is a foul, then scoring in the post just isn't nearly as efficient compared to driving and shooting anymore. Now I'm not saying we need to bring back a Radicham Janovic punch or anything, I'm just saying officials and players alike need to play a more aggressive game. 3 point fouls have been in existence since the NBA and the ABA merge, but when you touch someone, especially after the shot has been taken like this, then it shouldn't even be considered a foul. For example this shot. Stephen Curry has shot the 3 pointer and the ball is clearly in the air. Jared Dudley, I, I think that's who it is, then fouls Steph after the shot. The ball has clearly been released and this foul has no effect on the shot whatsoever. Call a common foul. I don't care, but literally if you throw Wilt in there, he would be able to block that shot where it is right now and it would be called a goaltend. It's literally on the way down. To start off, the rest need to change. Like, seriously? How can you call this a foul? I've been a ref so I know what it's like for those of you who haven't. It's hard. You're trying to get every call right while people are yapping at you to call just about anything. Like seriously, I was watching a Nuggets vs Lakers game the other day and it is ridiculous. Almost every shot attempt there was some sort of interaction with the referee to call a foul. The refs have it hard, but they can't let these moans and groans that the players make influence their decision. The NBA promised they would clear up that if the offensive player draws the contact on a jump shot like this, then it wouldn't even be considered a foul. But here we are, and it's being called more than ever. It gets tough when players are running around screens and there is a foul, but when in doubt, it shouldn't be. Usually it isn't a foul anyways, but players are getting so soft that they know, now know how to bend the rules in their favor. This is not good for the NBA, never mind basketball. The NBA is the biggest and most influential basketball league in the world. The league will affect every league from 5 year old rec leagues to European pro leagues. Children look up to NBA players, especially the stars. All the kids wanted to be like Mike in the 90s, and now the same goes with the popular players in today's game. For example, if I went and exclaimed that Michael Redd is the best shooting guard of all time, no one would listen to me. And although he was a spectacular player for those of you who don't know him, I would get continuously mocked and tormented until I'm forced to hang myself in my backyard. Whereas, if Russell Westbrook goes out and says that, people are going to take it into consideration. These players have a big influence on the basketball world, and if fans start copying their moves, this game might not even resemble basketball one day. Staying on the topic, we have players. Grinding out 82 games in like 180 days is hard. Especially when you're playing heavy minutes, players will do anything they can do to win. But it's getting ridiculous how soft some of these guys are getting. It's one thing to flop in a layup, but on a jump shot, we all make fun of football or soccer as Americans call it, but basketball is getting pretty bad. Every sport is getting softer, or society is getting softer, but if basketball can prosper as a man's sport or a women's sport, then that will be beneficial to the league. Players are acting like little boys and girls trying to get attention from their parents after their siblings push them onto the grass, except the referees are their parents. The rest are there for a reason, so stop whining and grow up. Finally, the association. Even if players man up, there's still going to be stuff like this going on whether we like it or not. The only way to truly change the league is to change the rules. Bringing back hand checking would be fantastic, but remember, the league puts money over the game, understandably. But the NBA is supposed to be the toughest athletes in the world, and if the league doesn't do something about it, well, I mean, I, I, I'm going to be pissed. They need to crack down on the offense drawing the foul and treating the 3 point foul like a contact layup foul or even more. If someone bangs your shoulder or goes straight up on a layup attempt, it shouldn't be a foul. It's just triggering when an offensive player waits for a defender to reach in just to flop and get the foul, or stick their legs out mid shot. 
This one's not even new, Bruce Bowen used to do it a lot, just not nearly as much as players like Harden today. Some people may think it's smart to be able to draw a foul purposely in a shot attempt, but is it really? It's just the way you execute it. If you make a loud noise and over exaggerate it, you're gonna get the foul. If you minimize it, probably not. And getting 3 points over this is much better than an aggressive back down to the post, where you literally have to exert so much energy just to get 2 points. Or a, a crossover, I don't care. Aside from the bullshit fouls, it is simply just much easier to score in today's game. For example, here we have Chris Paul bringing the ball up the court. Now already, you can see there's a ton of space between him and the defender. In the past, because Paul is such a good penetrator, Draymond Green, who is guarding him right now, would be right against him, restricting his access to the rim. Now Paul starts driving, but the lane is blocked, so he's able to reset the ball. In the past, again, you wouldn't be able to reset the ball, because you're going to have at least one pair of hands on you. You see, all the fancy ball handling today is simply because there is enough space between them and the defender to use them. So as the clip moves on, Paul is able to reset the ball and then drive in again. Whereas if a player, let's say from the 80s, tried to reset the ball, he would struggle because of the intense defense. And even if he successfully got to the rim, there would be at least another set of hands on him right away. Excluding the fact that in the 80s, the game of basketball had a much bigger toll on their body than now, penetrators and shooters today can play much longer because of the environment they play in. You can go through possession over possession without someone ever really getting touched, which is unheard of before the hand check rule was implemented. This is one of the many reasons why LeBron and other players like himself can thrive in today's game. Not saying he wouldn't do well in a different era, but it was just tougher in the past. Once again, the NBA is a business. They are going to continue to give guards more advantages because they are more relatable. Why do you see so many young kids liking the Golden State Warriors? More than likely, it's because of Steph Curry. He's a great guy, he's super unselfish, and he's the perfect role model to children. Kids grow up in a world with lots of threes taken and they immediately resort to the team that's best at it. Because it's something they can do. No matter how hard an 8 year old kid trains, he's never going to be able to dunk, but he or she can hit a three all day. The NBA doesn't need to bring back the hand checking rule, it just needs to make the league more aggressive, competitive, and exciting again. Because e even if you think it's okay now, in 10 years, it might not be. There will be no balance, there will be no point in even defending anymore, never mind posting up. So let me know what you guys think about this topic. By the way, I am not a LeBron hater. This has nothing to do with LeBron. I was just throwing out his name out there. And like, I'm not pro Michael Jordan or anything. <coughs> I honestly hate him. But let me know, do you think they should bring back hand checking or just make some rules to make the game more aggressive again? Um, I kind of want to know what you guys think because I mean, I, I want to know if I'm the only one who thinks this or not. But Thank you guys all for watching. I will see you buddies in the next one.